Connor, great to talk to you. Uh, I guess you must be a bit jet lagged, buddy. Uh, first of all, just tell us about the last uh, week of your life in terms of travel and logistics. Uh, well, it wasn't it wasn't too bad, um, but definitely a lot of traveling. I went over to England on the eleventh uh, of February and uh, got kind of used to the time zone for two days, and then went to France on uh, on Monday the thirteenth, I believe. And uh, made my seat uh, with the Lotus GP guys, uh, formerly formerly ART, um, and then kind of just hung out for a week, and then uh, we tested uh, just on this on the last Tuesday and Wednesday um, in Estoril, and uh, it was great. It was um, really 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 good to get back in a car. It's always nice after the winter to uh, to come back and, and get back in the seat. And uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, working with that team was really, really great. And um, it, you know, o- overall, it went quite well. And, and we were uh, we were really quick. So I was, you know, was quite pleased with that. Yeah, I, I mean, you just looking back at 2011, you finished the year really well. You're actually quickest in one of the tests right at the end of last year as well. I think um, mm-hmm. great way to go into the winter. Just tell us a little bit about that test and uh, and then preparing for the winter and what you got up to over the winter. Yeah, well, I mean, GP3 has, you know, some uh, some good test days um, for a lot of the drivers to kind of evaluate what's going to happen next year. And, and you know, for a lot of the drivers like myself who who want to compete in a second year. And, um, and yeah, it went, went really well. We were, uh, we were quickest on one of the, in one of the days. And, you know, it was just, uh, it was a good way to kind of finish the season because, uh, you know, the, the racing season itself was, was finished quite, uh, unfortunately with being taken out in our best position of the season. So, um, so it was good to kind of get to the testing and, and get some, get some work done. And, and then over the winter, really, it was all just kind of trying to put together this season. Um, it took a while. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it was definitely a long winter and, and I've never kind of gone through a winter, um, with as much uh, very technical negotiations going on, um, <laughs> I actually my I know my dad was 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 very heavily involved and very busy um, every day and still is really um, and you know we're um, it, it was good though I was able to kind of you know away from the racing business it was good to kind of hang out with my family over the over the Christmas and, and holidays and. And, uh, and yeah, just focus on training and, and being ready for this test, uh, you know, last week. And, um, and I, I felt very prepared and, and, and it went quite well. So, you know, it was, it was a really good starting point to, uh, to begin the testing. I mean, we don't race for a long time, but, um, but at least we've got, you know, another, another four days of testing, um, to come over the next two months. Uh, Connor, last year you split your time between uh, Indy Lights and GP3. I'm assuming this year you're focusing 100% on GP3 in Europe. And in that case, how are you going to manage your life in terms of traveling up and down or staying in Europe? Well, yeah, for sure this year the, the goal is to be GP3, just full full concentration. Um, but who knows, since there's only four test days in the next two months, and they're two and two... Um, if there somehow was a deal for me to do an Indy Lights race, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really mind doing it. I don't think um, it's not quite as busy. Last year, the testing was three days and three days, so it was. It kind of stretched out the travel. Um, now things are a little bit more spread out. But uh, if if none of the Indy Lights stuff gets, um, if that's not possible, uh, I'm not really too concerned about it because Europe is the main focus. So I think uh, our next two test days are are in March. Uh, March. 12 and 13, I believe, and, um, and I think I'll go over for that, and uh, I'll probably come back home afterwards because there's uh, just over a month between the next test, um, so I just, I, I could probably get, I could probably get a little bit more done on, on securing everything for the year and, and making sure I've got everything I need um, to go over then for April, because in April we have a Silverstone test, the final preseason test, and then as soon as that's over, I'll be basically uh, living in England through, um, through the rest of the summer uh, for the season. So I'm looking forward to it all get, just getting started, but uh, it'll all be a slow process over the next couple of months, I'm sure. Connor, it looks like whenever you get in the car now, you're basically on the pace. And obviously there are some sessions where maybe you're trying things and it's not reflected in the times or whatever. But how would you, if you had to describe the Connor Daily now compared with 
12 months ago as a, as a driver able to get in a GP3 car and go quickly, how would you say your driving has changed or developed? You know, that's an interesting question because, um, because I, I do feel uh, quite a bit different. Um, I, and it's not necessarily that I'm driving a lot differently, but last year, you know, going into last season, I was, there was a lot of kind of just, uh, it just was unsure. Just, you know, it was a whole new environment for me. Um, everything was new, tracks, culture, team, um, everything. And, you know, I was, I was ready to go, ready to race. Um, but it was just kind of one of those things where you maybe didn't quite have as much confidence because you just, you hadn't been in that environment before. Um, but now, now after, after such a kind of a very progressive, uh, learning curve in, in GP3 in, in 2011, uh, you know, by the end of the season, we were right at the right up at the top three and, and fighting for the win. Um, you know that 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 kind of really boosted my confidence and really just kind of made me. Uh, you know, it, it gave me the assurance that that I could do it. I could, you know, I could hang with these guys. You know, the the best drivers in Europe. Um, you know, kind of included me as well. So I think um, I think now. Uh, and, it, and it almost feels the same way as when I went into my second year of Star Mazda um, in 2010. I just feel a lot more confident, um, a lot more confident, uh, knowing the fact that I can do it. Um, and you know, now I'm just I, I'm so focused on, you know, I, I feel like after a year I'm able to put together what I've learned um, pretty efficiently. Um, and that's even one of the comments I got from the Lotus GP guys uh, at the first test. Um, you know, they were saying, uh, you know, they were, they were very impressed, uh, by, you know, by what I was, was doing so far in the test. Cause I was able to, you know, go through the data with those guys and, and make a lot of things happen. Um, just, just from kind of identifying what I was, what I was doing and how I can improve and immediately improving that. So I think, I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be good if I can just get everything, you know, sewn together and, and done for this year and, you know, get and get myself in a good environment. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be, you know, fighting for wins, uh, every weekend. Um, I'm just, I'm just really looking forward to it all starting. <laughs> well, we all are. Um, you've done a lot of testing now for Lotus GP, formerly ART, a championship winning team. You know how good they are. If you do go that route, there will be strong competition within the team that, ART always run a bunch of good drivers, two or three really quick guys, uh, which is pressure for you. And indeed, the team itself has a great record. So that's pressure again. But on the other side of the coin, if you do go that route, they're obviously a good team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the interesting thing for me is, you know, uh, yeah, it might be, you know, it, it's pressure. But for me, I'm just, you know, happy I'm, I'm able to be in some, you know, be in an environment like that. You know, I'd be, I'd be really just, I, I kind of know that, you know, I've got the tools around me to do what I need. Um, you know, now I can just, now I can do it. Um, and, and again, I, you know, I, I've only done a second year in, in Star Mazda. And for me, that was, that was so good because, you know, I, I was able to change teams, get with the best team and, you know, execute, you know, execute what I, what I learned. And, um, and, you know, it all went really, really well. So for me, I'm just kind of looking forward to do the same thing here is, uh, you know, capitalize on everything that I, that I learned from last year. And, you know, so far I've been able to do that. And I think, uh, you know, I, I can, I can see, I can see it in myself really that I've just, you know, I kind of approach the tests, you know, with a more confident manner. And, you know, I, I know that the ART guys know what they're doing. Um, and, you know, it, and, it, and it's really helpful um, when you've got two other drivers who are very quick um, alongside you as well. Um, which, you know, for the test, Daniel Apton and Aura Vigno, those are guys are, you know, Vigno is a second, second year guy like me and Apt is a quick driver as well. So I think that's a huge part of why ART is successful is because they've got, you know, good teammates. And, and last year that is something that I didn't have. And, um, you know, no offense to those guys, but, uh, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was difficult trying to lead, lead a team really, uh, when I had no experience, um, on any of the circuits, any of the, you know, in the culture and anything really. So, um, so I'm just kind of looking forward to just a different environment and, you know, a better, a better suited, uh, environment really to try and win a championship. 
Well, Connor, lots of fans over here. I'm sure you have in the States as well. And uh, it, it's great, a, a young American out there on the world stage doing what you're doing. And uh, very best of luck for you in, in 2012. We look forward to keeping up with what you're doing uh, with conversations like this. We'd love to keep, uh, keep in touch with you. And uh, all the best to your dad too. How's your, your dad and your mum for that matter? Are they both well? Yeah, Peter, my mom said uh, to tell you hello. And, uh, oh, you know, hi, Beth. <laughs> they're all doing well. So, um, so yeah, and other than that, you know, it's, it's, it's been nice to be home and, and hang with the family. Um, you know, it, it'll be a long summer, so I'm, you know, I'm just kind of getting in the family time while I can. And, uh, and you know, I'm just, uh, after that, looking forward to it all starting. And my dad's, dad's doing well. He's, he's busy as ever. I don't, I don't think I've seen him this busy in a long time. I guess that's good. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all good, Peter. I'm, you know, we're all, we're all ready for, uh, for another year. <laughs> good. Well, we look forward to seeing you back in the UK as soon as possible and make sure you get in touch because we have the, uh, the globe, oh, yes. uh, cruiser board here for you. So you can have some fun with that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I, I haven't forgot about that. I'm ready to get it. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Connor. Great talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Peter. I, I really appreciate it. I'm happy to do it anytime.